his garage. So this thing is just an insane monster uh, if you're drag racing people. Uh, if you're running into dunes or off-roading, uh, first, second, third gear, wonderful. Fourth gear, you can run 90 mile an hour, but you're running 7,000 RPM and you can't do that for more than uh, two or three seconds. Um, if you want to cruise, you can't go above 45, 48 uh, miles an hour. And so today's project is I'm going to dive into this, pull this engine out, pull out the transmission, and uh, I'm going to change fourth gear only so that I can run 65 miles an hour. I don't, I don't have a problem running this thing at a, at a hundred, maybe 130 for a few seconds, but uh, I don't want to run and cruise at uh, 65 mile an hour at 5,000 RPM. So I'm going to set this so that the fourth gear will run me with these 35 inch tires and the ring and pinion I'm running. Uh, I want to be able to cruise at 65 miles an hour at about 28 to 3,000 RPM. And that way I can go out and just cruise the highways all day, but my first gear, my second gear, and my third gear are still gonna be monster. And then I'll just probably have to uh, maybe rev up third gear a little bit to shift into fourth. I, I doubt it, this engine's got about uh, 190, maybe 200 horsepower, so. I really don't think it'll have an issue. I'd probably just throw it in fourth gear at 40 and it'll cruise around on up. So anyway, let's jump into it, yank this out, uh, and we'll take some uh, video of uh, the tranny when it's apart. <laughs> thing we gotta do, pull the bar, cradle under the engine and the uh, skid plate. Uh, second thing we gotta do is pop the wiring off, get rid of the fuel line, and uh, undo the uh, full flow oil cooler system so that we can pull that motor out. Now you understand why I built these to just pop off so that you can get things done quicker. So I got my skid plate off and I got my cradle bolts out. This is something that I've learned from the mechanics that taught me in Colorado. Mark all your bolts, bag them, Keep them separate. Don't put anything, don't put like uh, skid plate and cradle bolts together, even though they basically are screwed together. Keep them separate. So this is cradle bolts, skid plate bolts, and then it's really important, put them somewhere where they're totally safe. I'm gonna set them in the passenger seat. There's cradle. Well, we have got black going to the distributor. We have got, actually, I think we only need to disconnect the red. It goes to the bottom. And then we've got uh, oil is green. And then we got to do the uh, distributor, or the alternator. Cox, a little bit better on the tree, a little bit better on the 
Well, here we got the engine out. Got her sitting up in the uh, storage location against the wall. We've got the transmission out. It's on the trailer. Took an uh, hour and 57 minutes, I believe. So we are ready to head to the shop and uh, use the press and everything down there and the transmission tools. And we'll get that gear changed out. One of the other uh, things I want to do is, while this is out, I'm going to take that uh, oil cooler. I'm going to bring it down and run the lines through underneath right here you can see that gap and I'm gonna mount it to uh, inside here and have it blow out the bottom of the uh, car because it's having a problem priming quick enough that thing holds a quart on its own, then the lines hold another almost half a quart to a quart. The oil filter holds at least half a quart. And then the doghouse cooler holds a quart, well, probably half a quart. So every time I fire it up, I have to turn the uh, coil switch that I put on off and I have to crank and crank and crank the motor for about 15 seconds so that it can prime the oil system before I fire it. Otherwise, it'll just rattle my rods and I don't want to hurt that engine. So by lowering that down to the level of the oil pan, I won't have the oil draining back every time I shut the motor off. So we'll head down to the dune buggy shop, get that tranny torn apart. Stay tuned for part two.